Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.6.1.2, receptors from the AQA A-level biology specification. So here's what we've got to know. The spec wants us to know about a specific type of receptor, the Pacinian corpuscle, which should be used as an example of a receptor to illustrate that receptors only respond to specific stimuli and that the stimulation of a receptor leads to the establishment of a generator potential. We should also be familiar with the basic structure of a Pacinian corpuscle. It wants us to know how a generator potential is established in a bit more detail in terms of the deformation of stretch mediated sodium ion channels. Finally, we should know the human retina in sufficient detail to show how differences in sensitivity to light, sensitivity to color, and visual acuity are explained by differences in the optical pigments of rods and cones and the connections rods and cones make in the optic nerve. So let's make a start. Receptors only respond to specific stimuli. They come in different types. For example, mechanoreceptors detect pressure, photoreceptors detect light, and chemoreceptors detect certain chemicals. They may be cells or proteins, such as extrinsic proteins, that are found on the cell surface membranes of cells, specific to a type of molecule. To watch my video on cell structure, which includes extrinsic proteins, just follow the link top right. So the spec wants us to know about the Pacinian corpuscle as an example of a receptor. This is a type of mechanoreceptor found in the skin. They are found in larger concentrations in the fingertips, soles, joints, tendons, and ligaments. They detect mechanical stimuli, such as pressure and vibrations. A Pacinian corpuscle contains a sensory neuron ending, which is wrapped in layers of connective tissue called lamellae. So how does a receptor like the Pacinian corpuscle actually work? Well, pressure causes the lamellae to be deformed and press on the sensory neuron ending. This increase in pressure deforms the stretch-mediated sodium ion channels. The sodium ion channels open, and sodium ions diffuse into the sensory neuron ending. This depolarizes the cell, creating a generator potential. When the generator potential reaches the threshold, an action potential is triggered. Note that slow pressure changes or prolonged pressure do not lead to a response. So how is an electrical impulse, which is also known as an action potential, actually generated? There is a potential difference between inside and outside the cell. The potential difference when the cell is at rest is known as the resting potential. When a stimulus is detected, the membrane becomes more permeable, allowing ions to diffuse across. The potential difference hereby increases and this change in potential difference is known as the generator potential. If the generator potential is large enough, an action potential is triggered, which is an electrical impulse along a neuron. Note that because action potentials are all the same size, the strength of a stimulus is measured by the frequency of action potentials. Note also that action potentials and how they are established will be covered in more detail in topic 3.6.2.1 which is all about nerve impulses, so do not worry too much if these new key terms and concepts are maybe a bit overwhelming at first. Next, the specification wants us to know about the retina. Light is detected by photoreceptors. This is absorbed by light-sensitive optical pigments. Light bleaches these pigments, altering the membrane permeability to sodium ions. A generator potential is created which, if large enough and over the threshold, leads to an action potential being triggered, i.e. an electrical impulse is sent along a bipolar neuron. The bipolar neuron connects to the optic nerve which then takes the impulse to the brain. So there are two types of photoreceptor, rods and cones. The spec wants us to compare these in terms of sensitivity to light, sensitivity to color, and visual acuity, which is basically the resolution, the smallest distance that two objects can be apart for them to be distinguished as separate objects. So let's start with sensitivity to light levels. Rods have a high sensitivity to light levels because many rods connect to one bipolar neuron, 
so many weak generator potentials combine to reach the threshold and trigger an action potential. This is known as summation. Cones, on the other hand, have a low sensitivity to light levels because only one cone connects to one bipolar neuron, meaning that it takes much more light to reach the threshold and generate an action potential. Next, we have sensitivity to color. Rods have a low sensitivity to color as rods are only sensitive to light levels. Cones, on the other hand, have a high sensitivity to color. There are three different types of cones one for each of the primary colors, red, green, and blue, each of which contain a different optical pigment. When they are stimulated together in different proportions, you see different colors. Finally, we have visual acuity. Rods have a low visual acuity because many rods connect to one bipolar neuron, meaning that light from two points close together can't be distinguished. Only one single impulse is therefore sent. Cones, on the other hand, have a high visual acuity. This is because one cone connects to one bipolar neuron, meaning that separate impulses are sent. Many action potentials are therefore triggered and the brain receives many impulses. Note that there is a high concentration of rods in the peripheral parts of the retina. There is a high concentration of cones in the fovea. Great, that would be the specification covered. We've covered the Persinian corpuscle in terms of its structure and have explained how a generator potential is established by the deformation of stretch-mediated sodium ion channels. In this way, we can use the Persinian corpuscle as an example of a receptor to illustrate that receptors only respond to specific stimuli and how a generator potential is established when a receptor is stimulated. We have also covered the human retina and how the differences in optical pigments in rods and cones and the different connections that they make can be used to explain the differences in sensitivity to light and colour and visual acuity. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering the control of heart rate.